Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Ashland in Clearwater County. And today we have an ambitious episode ahead of us. We're going to do a number of things. We're going to talk about the color of the roads, because it's obviously different. We're going to call a few mulligans. We're going to fix our utilities. We're going to really uh, make some significant changes to our farm. We're going to upgrade our schools and then we're going to build a retail outlet. So a lot on the agenda, but I assure you it's a fraction of what I had initially. I bit off way more than I could chew and ended up with kind of a muddled episode. So the first thing I want to talk about is the color of the roads. Uh, so I had uh, a mod in here that would allow me to change every road individually and that didn't make a ton of sense. So what I did is I went and I picked up the mod road color changer and I brought every one of the values they were in the center and I brought them down to about 60 ish and in this realm it takes all the roads and makes them black like this which to me feels a lot more like asphalt and that would be the most rational solution uh, you, you wouldn't expect to see concrete or, uh, or really faded asphalt in a city like this um, it's not the sunniest place in the world it's 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 not you know los angeles or you know whatever so you'd expect that this would be darker so i went with the darker color and i like the way it turned out I'm noticing something weird here though <laughs> it looks like there's fireworks here it makes me wonder do we have fireworks allowed at this at this park no <laughs> i don't know why they're there it must just be part of that asset anyway so mentioned that we're gonna call it a couple of mulligans and Basically, I read through the comments and there was a lot of concern about my choice to zone along the coast and privatize this coastline. And I agree, it's not a good choice. The city is going to pay dearly for their zoning blunder, use eminent domain, and eliminate a number of homes, which is a problem because we have a, sh a shortage of housing. We're going to do the exact same thing over here. And we'll kind of have a a, a unique <laughs> roadway network over here so that we can have a bit of a more natural progression to this beach at some point in the future when we go ahead and build a beach. Uh, but for the time being, we've at least opened this up, left this house. Okay, it's gone. <laughs> and uh, we have the ability to, to do more now with this park at some point in the future, and maybe even have a path that connects up over here to this lighthouse. There we go. <laughs> uh, next up, one thing that uh, you know kind of bothered me uh, right here is the name of this farm. So it's called the Sunset Plantation. I don't ever like the name plantation being associated with a farm in 2021. Um, so we're gonna change this to the Ashland Family Farms. So this farm is gonna be what the city is named for and the roads will be named after uh, members of the Ashland family. I think that's gonna fit really well. And uh, we're gonna have to do a little bit more with that at some point in the future. We did mo modify this little park. It's called Bedford Grounds. We named this Ashland Square. Much, much, much better. And one of our other mulligans is going to deal with the school. We're gonna do some work here later on in the episode, but we're going to get this going right now. We will fix this all later. But we're going to fix this parking lot. Uh, I watched a Yumble video that explained how to use the big parking lots. And I feel confident and comfortable in my abilities now being able to, to actually use the tool. So with that, we are going to be able to do a lot more and make this look a heck of a lot more natural. Uh, and I'm also turning around this softball field to, to make it fit in a bit better with the surroundings. Now the balls will be hit into the school <laughs> rather than into uh, into the homes. So that is a good spot. Gonna do one thing really quickly. Just gonna use the power of YouTube to make sure that my uh, that we're not going to night time as we go ahead and try to build these farms. So when we previously built this farm, we had a number of these small farm fields because that was all that was available to us. Each of these farm fields requires three workers. So as you can imagine, that is a heck of a lot of workers that we are gonna need for this farm field. And all of those workers need a home, which means that we're gonna have a monster city to support all of these farms. And that's pretty unreasonable. Um, you know, I, I have family members that are farmers and I can assure you that they don't have, uh, 
you know, three workers for every quarter acre of land. <laughs> that would be that would be pretty outrageous, or you know, half acre, whatever this is. Uh, so. One thing that I decided to look up was uh, to see if there were any mods that could help with this. So let's look at this real quick. So I downloaded a bunch of Farmfield mods. Uh, an asset creator called Maximilian modified some existing farm fields to come up with all of these excellent options. So we have uh, wheat and cotton, vegetables, uh, rapeseed, uh, which I think is can canola oil. I think that's what that's used for. Um, corn and these come in a variety of sizes so what we're gonna do I'll, I'll place one as a demonstration right now and then we'll we'll start running this thing again so let's let's look at our largest field so we'll have a, a wheat field extra extra large <laughs> look at the size of this thing it is absolutely massive and trees just popping up right in the middle of it so something to keep in mind as we're placing this I don't have Prop Anarchy on. I don't think I have Road Anarchy on. No, nope. it's just just coming up up anyway. Something to keep in mind as we as we go about this. But this field requires four workers. This requires three. So I want these farms to really cover a lot of land. So we are going to really give our our farming area some more thought and eliminate some of these smaller fields. They're just not going to do what we would hope for them to do. So I'm gonna eliminate those right now. So I, I can use my better bulldozer. Turn it, I'll actually keep trees on because we wanna get rid of those and we'll get rid of buildings as well. Okay, so now we officially have absolutely no fields and that's completely fine. So along the back, I think what we're gonna do is we're going to use these large fields to back up to the homes and then we'll have some small fields next to it. Now I know it says wheat, I know I had corn back there, but the nice thing about these assets is they work very similarly to the vanilla ones in that you can just click on the asset and change what's in there. So I can go corn. Interestingly, so the, the corn looks differently that comes with this pack. So I want to make sure that I'm using the, the, the corn from here. Oh, there's a couple variations. So I have industrial looking corn. And then I have this other corn as well, VL, which I think looks more like the vanilla. And then I can use vanilla, which actually has a barn there. So that's that's kind of neat. Let's see which one looks nicer. What? <laughs> Just that, I guess we, we kept our menu up. So I actually like the look of this industrial corn a little bit more. And now we're gonna just gonna, gonna need to go in and fill in the gaps here. So the exact same thing, but we'll use a small field right here, medium field right here. So I just wanna get this rotated so it's it's in the right direction because I, I love that symmetry. So I know that we're just burning through money to do this, <laughs> but it's 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 uh, for the greater good. And that good is my sanity. <laughs> so. I, I think that that's important too. Oh, this is not gonna work. That bugs me. So let's see what else we can do here. Yeah, we'll just have a greenhouse over here. That'll work fine as well. So that's very nice. We have corn backing up to those backyards. You still see the fields, just a little bit different. So let's get this running again. We don't wanna leave this paused the entire time. And now let's see what we can fit here. So it looks like we can fit one of our extra large fields here, and then a large will fill it in the rest of the way. So that's nice. Over here, we have kind of a different situation because of the layout of the homes that we added there. We're probably gonna need to do a little bit of modification. We'll come to that one later. So I still wanna keep homes in these areas if at, if at all possible. And I, I could certainly, you can build into them. So let's see. It does allow you to clip right in, but I don't like that. And I imagine you don't either. So for this, why don't we do corn? Actually, why don't we do, we'll do the seed. Oh, no, we won't. We, we only have a couple of options here. So we have wheat, young. Okay, so it, this is good to know. Because we're looking, we don't actually have all of the options for all of these. 
So I've really got to be careful with my selections here. So I'm wondering, so this right here is wheat extra large industry. This is, it says it's industry two. I'm going to eliminate this one and see if I can find a better one. And maybe the choice is actually, instead of using the wheat, it's to use the fields extra large. And then we'll use the corn small and see if that works. No, it's the same. <laughs> so uh, we just, I think are going to need to be okay with a little bit of variation here. And that's, that's fine. So one of the interesting things about this asset that you can see is that it's kind of darker in the center, which is kind of weird. Uh, and it also has uh, some gaps. So we're going to either need to have some wind breaks in here, or we're going to want to give some thought to, uh, to actually using surface painter to, to clean this up a bit. So now I think we can get some of these extra, extra large fields in. We've got to be really careful when we're placing these. So I'll show you what I mean. So this is able to overlap and I don't want to do that because it goes right onto the road. Then you've got to drive through the field, <laughs> which, you know, I, I'm sure that there is a use case for that. I am just not sure what it is. You know what? Now that I've given it some thought, there is a use case for that. And that use case would be if you wanted to conform to kind of a weird size, I think that this would help the ability to, to overlap some of these fields. So here we're going to turn off our snap twos, except for our angle. And I kind of want to make a nice, nice connection in there. It doesn't need to be a perfect 90. It's a rural road. We, uh, we know what to expect in rural areas. Sometimes things won't be perfect. That said, now that I think about it, I'd rather deviate this road so that I can fit more fields in, in a nice tight grid. So we've created this road back here, uh, and that was on my based on my kind of my old measurements that were based on the older assets. We're gonna go back on that, call a mulligan on this, and uh, we'll adjust because I want this to fit really nicely. This really is gonna make that rural grid come to life. The other thing is I needed to make sure that I don't have trees popping up through here because it seems like these assets are going to allow me to do that, <laughs> which is a problem, but not an insurmountable one. So one of the things I could be doing, you'll see this icon right here. I've downloaded this new mod called Planning Roads, and it's a really neat mod. It allows you to place down these roads. They cost nothing. Uh, cars can go down them. You could develop a house on them. The speed limit's five miles per hour. Um, the, the, the goal is, is for you to plan out your roadway network. And because I have the, the color changer, unfortunately, it's not going to be that vibrant yellow color. So it'll be harder for me to find. But what you can see is I have this road here and I could plan out a whole neighborhood. And when you go into traffic manager, you can take a look and see that the speed limit's five. So this is not going to be prioritized uh, unless it's the only connection to an area or something. But, um, I had that for all of my road types. So you'll see those kind of just popping up through here, right there, another planning road. This will be in the mod collection for this episode. Uh, not gonna use it here, because I have a very tight grid and I know what I'm doing. So not entirely necessary here, but I still think it's very, very neat. So now we've got our water pipes under the old roads. They don't belong there, so we will get this fixed. But bluntly, do water pipes really belong <laughs> in this area anyway? Um, probably not. But we're, we're having them anyway. It's, uh, it's a game, and this is where we take liberties. So I think because we already have this existing road here, maybe we won't call a mulligan on everything, but we will call a mulligan on the road that we can eliminate safely, or, or that we, is more necessary to eliminate, rather. And then we'll have this, this jog over to this new road, and we can focus the farms. Uh, no, I, I hate that. <laughs> we'll just back it up and not worry about it. That mulligan is now complete. Okay, so I wanna fill in the rest of these farms and I'm gonna do that really quickly. Okay, we're gonna have some messy farm roads through here, but it will give us an opportunity to have some storage which we don't really have much of, and we have a lot of farms now, so it's not gonna be the worst 
uh, situation in the world for us. So this farm is very unhappy that it doesn't have water. That should help. We take a look, we should probably give some variety to these fields now. Okay, that is much better in my mind. We're kind of moving into a place this makes a bit more sense. I'm kind of thinking I wish I would have centered this road in some locations. So we, we are going to want to have some farm residences out here and some storage, but that doesn't mean that we have to make it real boring. So we'll go into here, we'll go into our farming. We certainly need some small barns. That's going to help out immensely. And then we will add in, oh, we're going to take out a house. <laughs> Okay, and the main idea I was thinking here is it would be nice to be able to have some barns mixed in here along with uh, a couple of homes here and there. Okay, so we want to make sure that our, 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 our barns are doing what we want them to do. I think balanced is probably good enough right now. It'll probably work out okay for us. So we do have this one last area over here that we need to figure out. And I think the main problem that we're going to have here is that this just isn't in a very conducive location to what we want to do, but that's okay. We'll give these farm residents a larger backyard. So the interesting thing about this is this is going to, and I actually really like that it spawned like this. You get a greenhouse here and some more corn fields, but we can change this. Kind of want some more vegetable fields over here. I really think this is a neat look. And then we'll give them a nice big backyard. And if they're going to have a big backyard like that, they need some, some decent trees back here as well. We'll give them some separation from their farm. So that's really nice. Uh, now I, I want to go and clean up some of these areas. So we have a number of... So we, we don't have any wind breaks. That's, that's number one. So if... We, we could certainly have some sort of tree like this to act as a windbreak. This doesn't need to be along every field, but it certainly would be helpful along some of them. Now we're going to go in and use Surface Painter, and I just kind of want to clean up some of the mess here. So I believe it's gravel that we have, and we have this garbage thing up that's bugging me. Uh, so let's go into our Surface Painter, we'll grab the gravel increase our brush size and kind of go along the road and just paint a bit of gravel in. So I do have this square that I added and interestingly, it's a diamond. <laughs> so looks pretty wacky. Okay, so I think that's nice and clean at this point. And you can see this just, this feels better with the exception of not having enough trees. <laughs> we add a few more in here. Just a couple, just adding a couple in, just to liven the place up a bit. I like that. So the other thing that we have here is we have this transmission line. We don't need that anymore. And even if we did need it, we weren't, we are not gonna use a transmission line like that anymore. So uh, I am kind of wondering, now that we have gone through and replaced all of these fields, I think the bulk of our employees are probably right here. What are we looking at in terms of employee, employees here? And now this is only 134 employees, which isn't all that, I mean, that's, that's pretty impressive for this chunk of land. It's still a lot of employees. I think a lot of that's here. These again, high density because of the, the size of the fields. Um, but we're in a good spot, except for this. See this? That is power, and we are struggling with our power. Let's pause things for a minute, because we have this this power plant, uh, this coal power plant with a view, <laughs> and uh, we don't want this anymore. Uh, you know, if, if we take a look in our industrial area down here, we're kind of struggling anyway. So the city is going to start to think about redeveloping this area. So one of the easiest ways to start doing that is we're going to start removing zoning where things are no longer zoned or no, no longer built. So where we've had abandonments, we're going to dezone 
these areas and look at that as a redevelopment opportunity. We'll let these places exist until they're gone. That happens. You'll have non-conforming uses that just remain in those areas, but we're not going to allow new stuff to develop there. And I want to think about the best place now for an industrial park and for our utilities. So I know that there's been a lot of concern. When you look at this, we've got uh, our water being pumped directly out of the ocean. <laughs> And we're, we're not removing the salt, we're just giving it to people and they can drink salt water. Congratulations. <laughs> it's not, not a great solution. Then we've got this industrial stuff. We've got homes next to a dump. Uh, this is the kind of haphazard planning or lack thereof that can happen at the start of a community. So as you're looking around, what is the best place for this? Well, we've got a lot of coast right here. That's probably not where we want to place industrial in an ideal world. I mean, we're going to need some industrial coast, but we're not going to have a huge port over here right now. So, so this is kind of a wasted land area. This is right near our downtown. Um, we, 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 this is coast everywhere. So the industrial is going to need good access to the highway. We don't want all of this industrial driving straight through our city. So I'm thinking right here seems like a good place. And someday in the future, we're going to want to preserve space to ensure that we can have an interchange here when this is uh, when this is a uh, is turned into a freeway. So let's get started. We're going to use our planning roads because I'm excited to do that, and we'll start to lay out what this little area could look like. And it's an industrial area, so it should be, you know, fairly logical in terms of its layout. So I think we're gonna reserve this for industrial. And then I wanna go over, let's say, 30 tiles. Go up 10, over 20. Uh, and we'll get a weird angle in our, <laughs> our roads, which I hate. So we're actually gonna to need to modify this, but that's what's great about this planning road mod is I can make all these mistakes and it won't cost me a dime. There we go, we get some logical angles in there. And this will be our industrial area. And the main thought here is we have good access to this highway. We've not done anything in this area so that we can develop an interchange in the future. We're going to probably turn off zoning along this road so that we don't inadvertently start zoning there. So we'll just go through. And this is going to be our quarter that we want to preserve for future expansion. And the way that we can do that is to not develop there. Not sure if this is going to work, but what I'm going to try to do is turn off zoning here nope doesn't like it doesn't like it at all oh it did work that's perfect I wanted to make sure that I don't inadvertently zone there by adding a node so I guess I could have also used electrics road tools and that would have also done the trick <laughs> but I like to get fancy that's what I consider that getting fancy I'm gonna go through and upgrade all of these roads so remember these are our planning roads the uh, this would be easier to tell if I didn't recolor the, color the roads again, but I did. So now we have this here. Now you might be wondering what we're gonna do here. Well, the very first thing we're gonna do is create a wonderful view into the city. So we have this really neat power plant. It's a gas powered plant, uh, the, the, the SZ Tower PP. It's actually part of the base uh, set of uh, assets in, in the Clearwater County pack. And I think this is going to be a really neat asset that will al allow us to produce enough power now to serve the city and also give us an interesting view off the highway. So that's neat. So what we could do here is use our transmission lines. This would be where it makes sense to use those lines. Actually, no, it's fine. We will we will actually go through and use our suburban power line. We'll use the transmission lines when we're... When, when we're bringing power between communities, which we are going to do at some point. There we go. So now we have this new power plant facility. And the nice thing about this location is now when they're bringing in, uh, when they're bringing in the, the raw material needed to operate this, I guess it's a coal powered plant. Uh, it's right off the highway. So we're going to decommission this plant over here. Goodbye. So we've got that now. Now let's think about water. We've been sucking in water off the ocean and we don't want to do that. So let's use this new asset that I added in the episode three 
uh, pack, which is a small water pumping station. So these are the kind of stations that you would see kind of scattered throughout a city and hidden in places like this maybe, where it's in a neighborhood, very clean location, very non-descript location. And we are producing 60,000, uh, that's uh, 60,000 meters, uh, or cubic meters worth of, worth of water. So I think this is double. Yeah, it's double, so that's, we'll need to keep that in mind because that could be a problem for us in the future. Our water availability is still just fine, so we're gonna be okay. Why don't we keep our city vitals watch over here? Oh, actually, we're not gonna be okay. <laughs> we're gonna need two of those. So let's think about one more. What is this? Interesting. It's pretty. We also have this gas water tower, which is another asset that we have, but I think we're gonna stick with these for the time being and just try to, when we have some unique neighborhoods that have the ability to, to snake these in somewhere, sneak them in, that's where we're going to place them. So we would need some kind of service road if we have it in here, so that is a bit of a problem. We might actually just place it back here behind the behind these businesses and then we can, we can add in some residential zoning. So we're right by the church right now next to this plaza that we never finished. We'll get to that some someday. Um, we do need some landscaping around these because do you, you, you think that we would not want these to be all that visible? It's not like they're very attractive or anything. But we do need to maintain access to the facility itself. So something to keep in mind. And then for our other facility, it was over here. And these homes are certainly not going to want to look at that. I don't blame them. So we will hide it behind some bushes. And in fact, we'll even be generous to these folks. Let's give them mixed flowers. That's kind of weird looking. Uh, purple flowers. So we, we will define their backyard <laughs> from that facility because they're not going to be very happy to see that. Here they come in. They're in their backyard. Look on their porch. Have a cup of coffee and look at that thing. But this is a very clean location. We don't ever have to worry about pollution. And truthfully, these would probably be separate water systems. So you'd have a, a you know two zone system. This pump over here serving this half of the city. And then this other pump over here serving this half. And maybe the division would be Church Street or something like that. Hard to say. But we're at least in a good spot with that. So we've got a couple more things over here that we need to take care of from a utility standpoint. So right now we've been relying entirely on a landfill in the downtown area. Let's let's uh, let's deviate from that uh, plan <laughs> and uh, we'll do something a little different. So we've got two new recycling centers over here and to make sure that they're very effective, we should probably make sure they have water first. So we have these two recycling centers over here. Let's, let's clean this up. We, we, we've been using surface painter. Why not a little bit more? Oh, that looks terrible. <laughs> that's, why, that's why you don't use it all the time. That looks even worse. Okay. We'll just, we'll just a couple of trees. And those are disruptive. They go into the building, but <laughs> what are you going to do, I guess? And that is a high quality landfill. That's exactly what we were hoping for. Let's rename some of these streets. Okay, so we've got some streets that make a little bit more sense now. We've got a Concord Street, kind of a nice little uh, 5B1C ode. I like that. So I also want to name some of these farm roads. They're harder to see. But I think what we're going to do is name them after members of the Ashland family. So we're going to keep some of these. Uh, I could see a Blake. I could see a Morgan, Price, Amanda, and Sabrina. So 12th Street comes up here. That's completely fine. William. And we have Amity. No. <laughs> Riley Road. That will work. Garland, which is really 5th. So let's fix this. Ooh, we've got some interesting things. So fifth actually should stop here. This is ninth, and we'll bring ninth up to Garland. We'll allow Morgan to do this. There's not two intersections of Morgan and Cypress, so we're okay there. Eighth, ninth, tenth, 
11th. So Morgan could be 11th. Maybe we'll just do that. There we go. So that's, that's helpful. Uh, I think we're in a better spot there. So we have our roads. We have our mulligans. We have our utilities. We have, oh, we do not, we're not, we're not quite done yet. Gonna empty that landfill. And I want to move this inland water treatment plant over to our new utility complex. So at some point in the future, we're going to do a lot of water processing. This could be on the coast, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. It's an inland treatment plant. I think we're just going to add this. We'll, we'll create a small treatment processing complex over here. I want to make sure that there's room for future expansion. We gotta pause this, otherwise we're gonna have some, we're gonna run into issues. Then we need our power line to connect up down here and we need to connect our water. All right, so we're good there. And now you can see this is kind of a hollowed out shell of what it used to be and soon enough, we're gonna run out of, uh, or we're gonna empty this landfill site, lots of truck traffic in the meantime. And we, we should really probably make sure that our, our recycling centers are operating as efficiently as they could be. We could also add another landfill over here and that truthfully probably isn't the worst idea. We're not gonna have incineration plants for a heck of a long time. So why don't we just add one over here and this will be how we are serving the trash needs of the city. So I'm noticing that we have some abandoned buildings again. We're gonna dezone these. We'll demolish and dezone. We'll continue to watch this area hollow out and as that occurs, just let these things go. We have new, we have, we're, we're going to have a visioning session for this area in the future. This could be one of the core parts of the downtown area and a really interesting redevelopment opportunity. So I, I'm excited to, to pursue that in the future, but that future is not now. So our, like I mentioned, our policy, let's take a look. So we're going to have our recycling. We have less uh, accumulation. And I also want to have recycle plastics because that will give a significant boost to our the efficiency of our recycling centers so now we're in a good spot with our garbage processing status i think we're we're we're, we're okay we're doing all right so our biggest need continues to be residential but that is not what i want to focus on right now at least not entirely i want to focus on the high school so i mentioned that yumble had a very interesting guide on how to use the big suburbs pack and it taught me a lot so we are going to to make some modifications here to our school campus so first and foremost these pads no longer make sense and nor do the trees so we're gonna go through we can go into our tree brush and increase the brush size and just kind of remove some of this stuff we'll get this figured out later and you might be wondering why am I clearing all this space is this gonna be a big parking lot I, I think it could be if you think about a football field uh, let's say you're planning for worst case scenario, and I hate doing that, but that's what ends up happening. You have a football team with 52 players on either side, um, or maybe not. It's it's Ashland. Maybe the offense and defense is playing the same. Let's say it's 30 players. So 30 on either side, plus the coaches, plus the cheerleaders, plus the fans, plus the parents. Uh, all of a sudden, you need 400 stalls or something crazy like that. And you end up with this massive parking facility as big as the football field uh, to serve the football field. And it's a really sad use of land, but it happens all the time. That said, that's not what I want to place right here. What I actually want to do is call a mulligan on the high school. We have Ashland, which has no buildings taller than two stories, maybe three. Let's look at our downtown. I guess we get some four, one, two, three, four story buildings down here. And then we have this high school that is one, two, three, four, five, six stories. <laughs> it's just, or five, maybe, if, I guess if we're being uh, nice about it. That's not reasonable. I don't like it. We can do better. So I downloaded some high schools as part of um, this episode. I'm, I'm including those in the pack. So we're actually, there, there are a couple options. We could have this suburban high school. I don't really want to use those yet. We're going to use the city high school. It's two stories. And in my mind, it makes a ton of sense. So we're gonna place this right here. And then we have a supporting asset to go along with that. One that was requested by a number of people in the comments, and that is a gym. So this is gonna 
frame the campus for us. And I think it's gonna be a really neat uh, addition to the city. So even though Ashland's High School is just a, <laughs> a couple years old, we're already going to rebuild it. I guess they passed a referendum and these people love their schools. So I kind of want to create a, a, a gathering area for the students here. And there's no need to necessarily have, you can see that there's this door here. There's no need to have a path there, but I think it feels better, so we're gonna do it. And I'm, I've been using my grid, but I need to turn that off to make this work. And truthfully, I'd kind of like to get this one closer to the road and er, closer to the school anyway, so I think we're gonna turn off the grid there as well. And that was a mistake. <laughs> I am currently letting Perfect be the enemy of good, and the results speak for themselves. So now we've got this nice little campus here with this tree in the middle of a sidewalk. Perfect. And you, you'd be able to go to gym. I'd love to turn this around, but then I need to have a road back here, and I'm not really interested in that. So we will decommission the old high school and bring some of these support facilities a little bit closer. So I think it'd be nice to have the basketball courts centrally located within the campus. Let's turn our grid back on. And we continue to have anarchy on, and that is very purposeful at this point. Grid off, because I want to go in between to make a path. Now I want to turn my road guidelines so I can line these up nicely. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. And then here, we're going to have a wide sidewalk. Figuring that on game days, you would need all of that extra capacity, whether it's a football or a football game. <laughs> Yeah, that's nice. That this this is starting to feel a little bit better to me. So now we've got this nice campus area. We'll 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 see. I don't know that I'm gonna be able to relocate these within here. Yeah, it's gotta be on a roadside. That stinks. So I think to to accommodate that we're just going to um we'll we'll only have one. I think that's fairly reasonable to only have one outdoor basketball court or multiple, but <laughs> <laughs> One's going to be good enough, rather. And now we have all of this area that we could have some parking in. Do I love that? No. But do I think it's necessary? Maybe. We can have some faculty parking back here and uh, some game day and student parking over here. So let's go in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start out with our drive roads. And where I made a big mistake last time was rather than having a couple of small drive roads... I went absolutely crazy using those drive roads uh, as my borders. So it, it, when you think about it, it makes sense to use the border roads as the border, but I didn't do that. And then you need to leave a one tile gap in between here. So this is where we turn off our road guides, turn our grid back on. And now we need to rotate some of these borders because they're in the wrong place. We want the borders facing the, to the outside and here we can get some parking now. Look at that. Easy peasy. Love it. Uh, so next up, we're going to extend this parking lot a little bit further out. So we are going to have a drive again. We'll leave two ways in and out of there because we want this to be as easy as possible to get out. Now, one of the things that Yumble mentioned that I really thought was, was smart was that multiples of three make this easier uh, for the borders. So three, six, that length. Um, so if you can stick with that at all, you're going to be in a better spot because then you can add in that middle aisle. The length doesn't matter as much. Hmm. <laughs> That's a problem. So as soon as I said we need to, we need to stick in multiples of three, I, I deviate from that. But no worry, we can fix that. So now we have this. I'll reverse those to keep that border on the outside. And then we're going to have some filler pieces in this one because we have a middle. Hmm. And something, again, is not lining up right. No, it, it did line up just fine. So you see that uh, now we have the gaps in here. So I want to have some accessible parking here. I didn't have any in this other lot. That is because I knew I wanted to have it over here. So sometimes you end up in these places where you can't have it on both sides due to the angles. So what I'm going to do is actually place some of these no parking stalls right over the... Oh, that didn't work. Sorry, the, 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 the no parking stalls over the top. And then at least you'll get the appearance of having parking stalls there. 
So kind of a trick that I've learned with that. And then we'll add in the rest of our stalls. And this is just such a neat mod. Once you figure it out, it's very easy to, to, to make a really nice parking lot. You can clip those areas out and look at that. Perfect little parking lot. But it's missing one thing and that is uh, landscaping. So I think that we would absolutely, as a city, really require significant landscaping requirements because we take pride in our city. So with that, let's think about requiring landscape planters at the end of these. These aren't big enough. I want this to, to cover the entire area. So we're going to do this oval large. Oh, that's too big. So in this particular area, this might actually be as good as it gets. So I think we can clip these into one another to make it look like one planter. Not perfect, very weird. <laughs> Don't like it at all. <laughs> we'll just, we'll have a smaller oval for this one. We don't want cars to be clipping through these, but we will require the larger ones where they fit, which will be these ends down here. We'll have some smaller landscape islands down there. And this is an easier parking lot. Why don't we get some street trees in here? Just, this is what we were looking for. Just wanted a bit of greenery in here. A parking lot is, is really a stark environment. It, it's very unnatural. And if there's anything you can do to enliven it up through landscaping, I, I think it's a good thing. And this is something that planners look for all the time during parking lot creation. Truthfully, I have a feeling that we would look to have more islands and more drive lanes through here, but it's the school district so we're probably going to lose that one because everyone wants to make sure that they can get as close as they can to the football game. They're running late. They're coming from their dinner. They, they went to the bar before the game and <laughs> grabbed a grabbed a beer. And they're, they're trying to get here in time. They don't want to let their kid down. And if there's not enough parking very close, you can bet your butt that they're going to be upset. So uh, I would see that as a, as a, as a, as a probably a rationale that would be utilized against the city. Oh, that looks terrible. That looks terrible. <laughs> so I thought that this came with some curb as well that we could use. Let's see. Yeah, so we have these curbs that we could also use here. And yeah, that's that's not what it's, that's not, uh, maybe that is actually a way to incorporate these islands directly in. I don't think I'd love them, so. Maybe I just won't worry about that all that much. What I could do here is just have a row of bushes or something to cover up the craziness here. And I think that we're going to we're going to keep the spacing of this fairly tight and really define this area. So I actually think this would be an interesting location if we could have some sort of, you know, rain garden. I don't think that it's going to be super easy to recreate in here and I'm not an expert on rain gardens by any way any means but what we can do is just kind of have some grasses through here just kind of work to define this space a little bit I think that this helps a lot and now here I'm going to use a lower bush just so that we can keep eyes into the parking lot from the street and that works well I think that works really well so now I think that this is starting to look more like a defined place. I do want to repeat. I think that's that's something that's really important. That symmetry that you see in places really makes a place feel real. So in the prop line tool, you can throw anarchy on in here and make things stick. I just always want to make sure I turn that off. Otherwise, madness ensues. And then we're going to repeat these, these same kind of random bushy trees through this area. So we have this leafy, leafy full, <laughs> that's what they call it. And we'll add some additional trees back here to kind of protect some of these cars that would be parked back here. And then we want some sound buffering from the neighborhood. So as much as they might like to, to be able to watch the game from their house, I bet they won't like the noise and lights that they would see. So a significant degree of buffering in between the homes and these ball fields. 
The only unfortunate thing is there's not a great way. I guess you access it from right here. It's not a, not the most highly accessible location. And then we'll go back to Leafy Full, add a couple in front of the high school and some behind it. Maybe a couple more, maybe a signature tree actually. Why don't we uh, give Biff an, an homage and, and move the tree? I like that. Then we'll have our signature tree right here. It's the tree that everyone is aware of. Maybe they call it the, the, uh, the, the uh, well, let's, let's, let's give this campus a name. We're going to make this a park just so we can name it. This will be the Ashland High School and it'll be the Mariners is going to be the football team there. So uh, someday the Mariners are going to have to take on their rival, which doesn't exist. <laughs> and for the time being, it'll just be them playing uh, intramural sports, I guess. <laughs> Again, we'll have some of these bushes to define this space and this place. Have to have anarchy on to make this work. And lastly, a small fence just to give some definition to this place. Keep off the grass, kids. <laughs> this is a place not for hanging out. It's a place for looking at. There we go. So we've got this nice place. We've got the students walking through here or the teachers, Carol Finch. She's actually using this as a cut through. What are you doing, Carol? You really want to walk through the high school? I, wow, that's a, that's a heck of a walk. I wouldn't want to walk through the high school. That's just me though. Maybe I'm a weirdo. <laughs> it's just always a little bit of landscaping you could do to give a place a little bit more life. Truthfully, I could, I could fill the rest of this in and that might look nice too, rather than have this weird gap in the middle. Let me tell you, this would smell absolutely, <laughs> this would smell absolutely glorious as you're walking by it. There would also be a lot of bees. So if you are allergic to bees like I am, I hope you have your EpiPen because <laughs> they're going to be everywhere. <laughs> but it would be a really, really nice looking amenity. So I dig it. And we've got our school. We're looking good. This is just a really attractive school. I like it a lot. Now I like it even more. <laughs> So, oh, whoa, 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 we missed something. You know what it is. A little bit of landscape. Yeah, now now we're in a good spot. Okay, now we are in a good spot. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. No, not yet. There, I think now we've done a, a, a bit of a better job with the protection from the noise from the football. It, it's not going to be perfect, but it's better. Yeah. We're, we're, we're in as good a spot as we're going to be, I think. So I think I am going to honestly finally leave this. I'd love to just go through these neighborhoods and add a couple of trees here and there, especially with our excellent fire coverage that we have in the city. I think we have two fire engines for uh, all 3000 people here <laughs> in our sprawling city. So uh, we will leave it there. The last thing I want to do, the very last thing I want to do actually before I get there, we've got one more school I want to take a look at, and that is our elementary school. So it's funny. It's been so long. It's right here. So we've got this super modern looking international elementary school, and I hate it. Goodbye. Let's pause so we don't upset Myrtle. And let's look for a school. So we have this American elementary school that'll work if we want it to. Also got this Rice Park community, and that's a high school, mid-sized elementary school, and then we have this urban looking elementary school, and I think that what we're going to do is let's take a look at the scale of these, and yeah, that's really large. This is as well, but I think it fits a little better. So let's eliminate these homes again. We're going backwards again. The population, what is this? That's our police station, so we're going to call a mulligan on the police station location and relocated across the street. What is this? Is that our, that's our fire station. Okay. This is three tiles. Oh, I don't like any of this. I don't like any of what I'm doing right now, but I also think it's necessary. So I could leave that in there and just kind of let it do its thing, but we're going to not do that. And this will work just fine. And now we can dezone this and put our elementary school where it belongs. Yeah, it's it's it looks like it might be missing a couple of assets, but we can we can figure some of this out. So we can certainly add a small playground right here. 
We have Anarchy on. So we'll just add that right into the, well, that's the front of the school. So maybe we'll relocate that to the back. We'll use move it to make it fit just a little bit better. That's nice. And then we, oh, that's not so nice. <laughs> and now I'm going to turn off all of my anarchies because I'm about to get myself into trouble. I can feel it. Actually, I need anarchy. Never mind, because I want to add some paths to the school. Okay, so we've done some relocation of things here, and I think we've made it look a little bit better. Made things seem like it's supposed to be like this. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. So let's get some landscaping in here. And after that, I think our elementary school is probably in a pretty good spot. And I really like some of these. These uh, We've been using some bushes in here. So we use some of our leafy foals. I think this is a good spot for a tree considering that's a blank wall and then we'll come down and have some smaller bushes as well and I kind of want that same color to manifest itself in these other areas I think we actually might just add one more tree over here it's uh, again a big uh, kind of a, a couple of statement trees and then leave it with some open space so truthfully, what I didn't include here is parking. We would probably need some parking. This probably would have been a good place for it. We're going to ignore that. Well, we'll, we'll say this is an older school. They're utilizing street parking and hoping for the best. <laughs> we could have had a basketball court over here as well. That might have fit in really well, but I think we're okay with this and uh, people would be able to walk to this school. Kids would be able to walk to it. So that's a nice solution over here in my opinion i don't love the landscaping job that i've done over here i think that i could have done something a little better maybe it's a big old tree like that one <laughs> just the, now we're starting to hide the school i yeah i don't know what i did it's it's not perfect by any means but it's good it certainly feels a little bit more full i hate the vanilla trees that have spawned on this that just look dead but it's okay so 95 students are going here we're okay so the last thing i want to do is i think that walmart would take an interest in this town uh it seems like a, a good location for walmart 3,000 people right off a highway some uh there's no grocery stores in the city yet except for the little ones you'd see in the downtown and walmart's gonna look at this and say we've got an opportunity what is this this be one of those old buildings that spawned we're gonna call a mulligan on that. We hate that. <laughs> so the other thing I want to do, so I added another mod uh, that Lee Hawkins suggested actually to fix our traffic problems here. And you'll see that there's no, we, we don't have any of that weird looping that we used to have. And that was the crazy tourists fix. So that is another mod that is in this asset pack for this episode. And since we had that, there we go. We can get rid of that weird roundabout. Take this back to a respectable place. All right. So Walmart is going to want as many access points as we're going to let them have. And they're also going to want a gigantic parking field that's twice the size of their store. And they're going to want highly visible location uh, in reference to the highway. So it's in our best interest to fight them, <laughs> to, to make sure that we're not giving them exactly what they want but we're, we're giving them an, enough of what they need to be a viable business. So we're gonna ask them to, to, to step back a bit from the highway. We'll give them two access points off main and that's all we're giving them. Um, and they're gonna want more and they will take more if you give it to them, but we're not doing it. We're also gonna tell them that we want them to orient towards main and not towards the highway, which I think that they would like to do. And that's just going to add a point of emphasis that this is about the city <laughs> and it'll make it easier for people in the city to get to it because it'll be a, a quicker front access rather than walking around. So it'll be, it'll be better. So again, we're going to want to keep this to an inter, uh, increment of 12 or increment of six. And then we're going to turn the order of these so that those sidewalks are along the outside. And then we're going to use our filler pieces 
get rid of our road guidelines here and keep these one tile apart. Hmm. This is interesting. We've got some weird gapping stuff happening here. Happening here. Let's let's start over with our border. We'll go up nine this time. Maybe we'll just do our fillers one by one. Oh, there we go. So let's get our Walmart in place. This is another King Leno asset. And I think it's going to look very familiar if you have seen some of my series in the past. So we're going to have that, the main Walmart right there. We'll have the auto center. Let's see. Let's take a look at this asset. And we want to make sure that this is on this side of the store. I'm thinking we might actually want to sneak it back here. So we could use Rico for that. Otherwise, you know, I'm, I'm fine snapping it to a road. Or we can just do this. And we're going to ask them to create additional building planes by kind of... Rather than just having this flat and being kind of the same. It gives it the appearance of multiple buildings, even if it's all one color. Uh, if, you, if you have multiple you know, building planes like that. So that articulation is really a, a big benefit to the, the overall look of a building. Even if it's Walmart, we want to we want to think about that. And next, we have Walmart Outdoor Living. And we will have that over here. Yeah, that is good. We do have trees popping up where they shouldn't pop up. Because I decided it would be a good time to leave Anarchy on. And, uh, you know, I would imagine that Walmart would clear the site, grade it out, and then want to start with something totally fresh. So now we have this nice, fresh spot. Um, let's make sure that it's flat. We haven't been looking at our topography at all, but this is kind of where it starts to play in. So I'm just lowering this to make sure that all the topography lines up with this road here, and then we'll do a bit of grading. This is probably a good spot if we wanted to have some sort of retaining wall, because you can see that that's a few meters up might not be entirely necessary in this location though so clearly walmart would not want to build a retaining wall just just for the sake of it they're not building those because they're attracted they're building it because it makes their site easier to work on so there we go and next up we need water and power and parking in this location we also need to get a drive aisle out to our auto care center there we go. That's looking good. And you can imagine that we'd also want to get a drive aisle to the back for freight. That didn't work quite as I intended it to, so I think we're going to budge this a little bit. Ah, it's still not right. You know what? We're just going to not worry about that beyond that. That's, that's good. So now we've got this set up. Let's get some power lines and water lines out here. We are going to use our suburban, or a rural power line rather. And truthfully, to preserve the look in front of the store, I think we're going to run that behind the store. That'll, that'll be a lot better. And then we're going to want to run our water pipes underneath our road where they belong. And if, ooh, we are getting dangerously close to these houses over here. <laughs> this would probably be a private loop through here, but I think that would be something that Walmart would be interested in as well to maintain water pressure. There we go. And this works. I don't love where these entrances are. I think it makes no sense. I think Walmart would start to lobby and say, why are you making us do this? This is a, a nonsense location. And we would say, yeah, we, we agree. This one needs to stay back. In fact, the solution here is probably to make this parking lot bigger. Now we've got to make sure that this is all flat again, because it's not. <laughs> there we go. And now we just need to use our, our actual landscaping tools to get the places in the middle to be right. Oh, we got one stull away here. Oh, and that is, that is getting a bit too close. Yeah, we might actually need to go back on all of this. Yeah, I just don't think that this worked the way I was hoping. We might just call a bit of a mulligan on the highway. <laughs> That'll be an easier solution. Not the most realistic one, but it's okay. 
At some point, now that we've put this here and it's so close to the highway, we're going to need to to fix those locations, uh, the location of the, the, the highway any, anyway at some point. And lastly, they're going to clearly want some, some highway signage. So they're going to ask for one over here, one over here, and we'll say back that one off the road. And then they would probably want another one facing the city, and we're going to say that that's obnoxious. And we're going to lose anyway because the city council is really excited about a Walmart. But we will get it put over here, which will help some. That said, it's going to be visible from a long ways away. In fact, if you're over here, that, that Walmart sign is visible at night. Let's, let's check that out, actually. Yeah, that's not pleasant. That's not super pleasant to be able to, to see that, but it happens. So we're going to live with it. Come back to noon and back to Walmart where we will finish up with the store. So at this point, they have no employees. There are multiple problems. There's no parking, <laughs> no workers. They're unhappy, but they've chosen this path. Let's get the parking lot done real quick. I was hoping there might be an elegant solution to be able to, to, to create a drive aisle up the center. And I think that using the filler pieces is probably the best I'm gonna get, but it works all right. Okay, so we've got that. We're in a good or a good spot there. We do need some planters. All right, now that we have those, we, we would truthfully probably like to see another drive aisle in here. And maybe if we would have left that one here, we could have had another. But it this will do. Uh, I, I think that Walmart, again, is going to try to maximize their parking space. They might even try to get some over here. They would also probably try to pave this entire area and put out some sort of product. Uh, so we are going to, let's see if I can emulate that. It, it, it's ugly. I don't like it. But uh, I imagine this is exactly what they would do. Yep. <laughs> You'd see the exact same thing right there. There you go. Pavement everywhere. And a tree clipping through here. And then maybe we could convince them to put some planter boxes in just to liven it up a little bit. And now for some trees, and I don't know how creative they're going to be unless we force the issue. You get some of this artificial looking planting in some of these areas. I'm trying to, to simulate that a little bit and, and kind of show that you don't always get the most thrilling landscaping in a place like this. You know, at least they're doing something. They, they could just say we're not doing anything, but, um, you know, clearly would like to see more, <laughs> more rather than less, if you can get it. Oh, there we go. That's the, that's the spot right there like whack-a-mole so i'm just gonna leave it <laughs> so that leaves us in a good spot we need a little bit of pavement over here as well there we go and then we need to put some trees within the outdoor center let's do something a little festive because they're gonna they're gonna have they're gonna sell tropical plants to people who live in a temperate climate well fern's not a tropical plant then maybe we'll have some smaller bushes in between. Ooh, and I got a little crazy over here with one of these trees. Looks like I got crazy with a lot of these trees. I tried to get fancy again, and <laughs> I'm just not a fancy person, apparently. <laughs> I just need to stick with what I know, which is that I can make some of this. Whoa! Where'd that tree come from? Oh, right there. I know that if I'm really careful and deliberate, I can make this stuff look okay. I want to copy this because we're going to bring it over here, repeat the exact same thing. So we've got this again. So repeating the exact same thing again. And then from that, I think that we're going to have some lower bushes kind of along the outside. There's no way that Walmart is going to do anything that would obstruct their views here. Not in a significant way anyway. So why don't we use the prop line tool? Yeah, this, this, this might work. So we'll use the prop line tool and we'll see how this turns out. Yeah, that's a little bit too close. I think that they would have a problem. We'll say 12 meters. 
and they're gonna fight us on this <laughs> because they want people to see that their parking lot is empty. So you might wonder, why do they want it to look like their parking lot is empty? And that is all availability. It comes down to showing your customers that it's a convenient place to shop because there's you know, the ability to kind of just walk, or, you know, drive right up to the front of the store and easily be able to uh, to go shopping. So that's something that, that they're going to be lobbying for. And as the planner, I'm thinking about that because that's... <laughs> That's not necessarily the, the best land use, just because it looks empty. That's, I mean, that's a lot of extra pavement. So if there's anything that can be done to, to, to improve this at all, I'm, I'm going to be looking for it. Oh, and that's very tropical looking. <laughs> uh, well, let's double back from that. That would fit in well in Verde Beach. Not, not here. Let's see, yeah, that's tropical looking too. This is more deciduous looking. So we could have just put this there, but now I fear it's actually gonna be too much that we, we might be able to just have a bit of that in these areas, but they're probably gonna to wanna to maintain a clean look anyway. So this will probably do the trick. I think what we want to think about a little bit here would be this extra land right here. And I, I'm guessing they're gonna to look to sell that immediately. So we'll allow two uses to open up here and we're going to put this in a theme district because we have the perfect theme for these buildings. Why don't we just cover the entire Walmart area in this? And the theme that we're going to use here is going to be our auto-oriented industrial or auto-oriented commercial. <laughs> and that should do the trick here. Let's turn off our anarchies. And we're in a good spot. I do think I'm going to take just a minute or two just to continue to build out our residential network because we are really hurting for residential. So we'll continue with our 15 by 10 grid. We'll go out maybe two more blocks. Now, truthfully, this connection I just made here, this water connection is probably a connection to a private main. I don't see a real purpose this to be public but we're gonna roll with it anyway it's fine I do want to make a pedestrian connection through here and then have a significant degree of landscaping here wouldn't you know McDonald's <laughs> that would seem to be a good fit there you can walk to McDonald's in your neighborhood so now if you happen to work at Walmart or McDonald's, you'd be able to walk to work because there are pedestrian connections through there. And the last thing we want to do is get some landscaping because these are just absolutely not fun uses to live next to. So you would want to have some sort of buffering in between them, especially with the light and the noise. You'd imagine this drive through here, which you can see there is a drive through. <laughs> All the parking's full. Everyone wants to go to McDonald's. So yeah, there, there's a drive through that we should add around this building, truthfully. We'll just deal with a bit of ugliness here. Oh, and we're going to... Oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> well, we'll get rid of zoning here, and that should do the trick. And now we're going to want to expand this out one more tile so we get another auto-oriented use. Hopefully our McDonald's comes back. That was a good fit. <laughs> but I, I, of course, had to, to muck that all up. Okay, so I added some lower trees around here to preserve the vision triangle around the road. It's still really tight. In fact, I bet you that this wouldn't be allowed. It's too, too big. Could probably have some of these lower bushes. Um, that, that would that would help. What do we get over here? A jack-in-the-box and it has a drive-through built in. So that's good. That's a it's a nice looking Well, it's, it's a jack-in-the-box <laughs> I, I like jack-in-the-box though, so it's fine. We don't we don't have them Anywhere near me. So but uh, when I was in LA Definitely had it It was actually the place I would go when I was a game tester way back in the day I would go to Jack in the box with my buddy and uh, it was our it was our getaway from from testing Bioshock <laughs> and other games like that so uh, it's a lot of fun a lot of fun 
There we go. Hopefully McDonald's comes back. I could always search for it. I think I can make that work. Ooh, fancy McDonald's. This works too. Yeah, I like this. This this is nice. See, is it historic? It is. Then we can add some little landscaping next to it. Actually, we can add some medium trees next to it. This could also be an outdoor seating area. I'm getting too into the weeds. It's a Walmart or a Walmart with a McDonald's. I'm sure that they are, you know, they know what they're getting into. <laughs> but they are going to want a sign. They are also going to want one on the road here. So we will give that to them. Wonderful. Jack in the box is not so lucky. <laughs> you could come back around here, take your order. It's kind of a hike. That's okay. We're not going to make it perfect. We're not going to let perfect be the enemy of good. This is pretty darn good. I like it. That is good. So I think that we are in a good spot with the city. We're ending in a place where there's not enough workers. Uh, we're ending in a place where, uh, you know, I think that the city's looking good. I don't love Walmart, but it is a thing. And it's going to be in its most logical location, which is near the highway. So I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. We've done a lot. And I, I think that uh, we've done good things. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Uh, I also want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters. Their support means the world to me and helps me create the channel and make it the channel that it is. Uh, if you are able to support me there, great. If not, the best thing you can do is hit the like button. It helps my channel get discovered. Thank you so much and join me for a brief city tour. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.